This morning we are going to switch up the uh, the King of Love, My Shepherd Is, will be the ending song, and the offertory song will be Give Me Jesus. Let my prayer come into your presence. Incline your ear to my cry for help, O Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. As we come together to celebrate these sacred mysteries on this beautiful Sunday morning, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you heal the contrite. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting.
and let us pray. Almighty, merciful God, graciously keep from us all adversity, so that unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Resplent and the um, resplent and unfading is wisdom, and she is readily perceived by those who love her, and she is found by those who seek her. She hastens to make herself known in anticipation of their desire. Whoever watches for her at dawn shall not be disappointed, for he shall find her sitting by his gate. For talking, taking thought of wisdom is the perfection of prudence, and whoever her, for her sake keeps vigil shall quickly be free from care, because she makes her own rounds seeking those worthy of her, and graciously appears to them in the ways and meets them with all solitude. The word of the Lord. My soul is thirsting for you. Oh. oh, I'm sorry. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Theologians. 
We do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, about those who have fallen asleep, so that you may not grieve like the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose, so too will God, through Jesus, bring with them those who have fallen asleep. Indeed, we tell you this on the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will surely not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself, with a word of command, with the voice of an archangel and with the triumph of God, will come down from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, console one another with these words. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones, when taking their lamps, brought no oil with them. But the wise brought flask of oil with their lamps. Since the bridegroom was long delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight there was a cry, Behold the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise ones replied, No, for there may not be enough for us and for you. Go instead to the merchants and buy some for yourselves. While they went off to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went into the wedding feast with him. Then the door was locked. Afterwards, the other virgins came and said, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he said in reply, Amen, I say to you, I do not know you. Therefore, stay awake. You know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, good morning. Old habits are hard to break, aren't they, Sandy? (laughs) Today in our readings, we have, so to speak, an underlying theme of preparedness. Not preparedness for anything of this world, but preparedness for our journey to the next. And let's begin with our second reading from St. Paul to the Thessalonians. And in Thessalonica at that time, Paul had been preaching about the risen Christ 
and how he was going to return and to take those disciples of his with him. And yet something happened. Time began to pass. And year after year, month after month, there was no Jesus coming back. And the Thessalonians thought either that they had done something wrong or perhaps they weren't destined for heaven, that they had been once again cut off. And St. Paul writes to them, first of all, to reassure them that they're walking in the faith, that they've been steadfast, that they're running the race, they're keeping the faith. But then he goes on to explain to them not to worry about when the end time comes. When Jesus decides to come back, he'll come back, but be prepared, be ready. And he talks about how when Christ comes back, the dead will rise from their graves, and then those of us who are left, who are true believers, will ascend with him just as he ascended into heaven on that mountain in Galilee many years before. We look at our first reading from Wisdom, and the author is getting across to us again to be wise, not to be smart, not to be intelligent per se, but to have wisdom, to see the difference of what's important in this life and what isn't, to see the difference between being prepared for the next life and being unprepared. And I think for most of us, wisdom comes with age. It's easy to get wisdom when you make mistake after mistake after mistake and you realize that you need to change and do something different. That's a sign of wisdom. But wisdom doesn't just come with age. We all know, shall we say, older people who are as foolish as ever. Sometimes wisdom, like all gifts, are given at a young age. If you don't believe that, come and talk to the kindergartners. Come to a daily mass when we're all back together. And I miss those daily masses. You all have no idea how many times I have based my weekend homilies on something that a kindergartner said during mass. They have this innocent insight into things that we adults miss because we are filled with all this minutia that distracts us. Again, wisdom is having clear vision. And then we get to our gospel today, and again, Jesus is telling his disciples a parable. And I don't know about any of you all, but a few times when I've read this, I automatically go to the Christian ethos. What's wrong with the wise virgins? They had extra oil. As Christians, they should have shared it. But that's not the point of this parable. Jesus isn't getting, the cross, getting, isn't getting a cross, the idea of giving to others as you would have them give unto you. He's getting across the message that time is short, that our life on this world is but a blink of an eye, and that we need to be prepared for the life to come. And so he talks about these virgins with these lamps. And these aren't torches, these are just little lamps, processional lamps, that the Jewish people would have had for ceremonies like weddings. And here they are, they've all come with their lamps, and then something happens. The bridegroom, let's say Christ himself, is delayed in arriving. And they begin to get sleepy and drowsy. In other words, a sign that they might begin to fall into bad habits, that they might begin to sin. But those virgins that came prepared were ready. The foolish virgins were not. And in the end, the foolish virgins are cast out into the darkness where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth, where the wise ones who were prepared get to go to the banquet of heaven. And I think, again, that sleepiness, that drowsiness that Christ talks about is an allegory of our own lives, that we have good intentions, that I think most of us get up in the day and we think, well, I'm going to live a Christian life. I'm going to live like Christ has called me to live, by loving, our, by loving my God and loving our neighbors. But eventually, somewhere along the line, we get sleepy and drowsy. We, get, we begin to fall back into our old habits, 
and begin to sin and begin to fall away from Christ. But Christ, through his church, gives us that wonderful sacrament of reconciliation, which always, always gives us, so to speak, quote unquote, extra oil for the, for the journey. And as we confess our sins, we are washed clean, clean, and we are washed in the blood of Christ, and we become new once again. Because ultimately, the question for all of us today is, am I prepared? Because Jesus again tells us, we don't know the hour or the day or the time. God forbid, if Christ showed up today on our doorstep and knocked on our door and asked us, no, didn't ask, said, it's time to go, would we be prepared? Would I be prepared? And I hope that our answer would be yes. But if it isn't, then let's be wise virgins. Let's use our time and our talent and our treasure to build the kingdom of God. Because ultimately, when Christ comes again, it isn't about who we are. It isn't about how much we have. It isn't about where we live or where we work or where we went to school. It isn't about any of those things. It's about what we've done. Have you done to the least of my brothers and sisters what I did for you? Did you serve them? Did you love them? Did you show them compassion and mercy? Were you an instrument of my grace? Or were you an obstacle to my grace? Did you open your hearts and your arms to strangers? Were you welcoming to those who were a little bit different? Because that's where our, our, our judgment will come. Again, not how many rosaries we do, though those are wonderful, don't get me wrong, but how much do we love? How much do we truly love our neighbors? The days are short. Nature shows us this in this time of the year. Seems like it's 3.30 in the afternoon and the sun is always going down. It's a good ana uh, analogy for us in our own lives that our time is running out, that that time to go home is coming near. And the question remains, are we prepared? Please stand. <clears throat> I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. And for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now let us offer our petitions to our Heavenly Father. For church leaders, may God grant them every grace as they serve his people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For public leaders, may the Lord bless them with prudence in their decision-making 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who cannot find work, may God provide their need and make a way for them to share their gifts with others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this faith community, may Christ's light direct our ways and shine through us as we bring his word to all we meet. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, may the Lord bring them into the eternal joy of his heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intention of this Mass, which is for the repose of the soul of Beverly David, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you this day to offer our prayers and our gifts to you. Fill us with the grace of the Holy Spirit, that we may prepare our lives so that we may reign with you. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me of my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honor it with loving devotion through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just that we should give you thanks and praise, O God, Almighty Father, for all you do in this world through our Lord Jesus Christ. For though the human race is divided by dissension and discord, yet we know that by testing us, you change our hearts to prepare them for reconciliation. Even more, by your Spirit, you move human hearts, that enemies may speak to each other again, adversaries join hands, and peoples seek to meet together. By the working of your power, it comes about, O oh Lord, that hatred is overcome by love, revenge gives way to forgiveness, and discord is changed to mutual respect. Therefore, as we give you ceaseless thanks with the choirs of heaven, we cry out to your majesty on earth, and without end, we acclaim.
You, therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves are turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you. Sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <clears throat> the mystery of faith. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer what you have bestowed upon us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop, and all the bishops, and your entire people. And just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, and with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus, our Lord. <clears throat> Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And now at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, and by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer each other a sign of peace.
<clears throat> Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The disciples recognized the Lord Jesus in the breaking of bread. Hallelujah.
and let us pray. Nourished by this sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your divine mercy, that by the pouring forth of your Spirit, the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered, through Christ our Lord. Why don't you all be seated for just a second. All right, this Tuesday evening, we finish up our, confirma confir our confirmation masses. Uh, we will confirm the last three or four or five uh, that unfortunately were quarantined during uh, the, the uh, confirmation masses that we have. So please keep those uh, confirmandi in your prayers. Uh, for those that come to Tuesday night mass, you're more than welcome to join us. I just want you to be forewarned. It's not going to be a normal Tuesday night mass of 25 minutes. It might actually last 30 minutes, all right? So just so you all are aware. Uh, see, second graders, you have your first, reconcili work, first reconciliation workshop next Sunday, the, November the 15th. Our COVID protocols are in, 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 uh, in order. And contact Sam at the office for more information. Our Catholic, our Catholic stewardship appeal is going quite well. Uh, we've made it, as, we're going to just round it up to 50%, so we're halfway there. So you all have been doing very well, very, very well. If you haven't given anything, I would encourage you to do so. And if you have, I want to thank you. I myself have not given anything yet, but I'll get around to it eventually. They always say the first 90% are the, is the easy stuff. It's the last 10% which is difficult. All right, uh, let's see. Please leave your uh, song sheets in the pews so we know, we know where to clean and remember to bring cans of corn and beans for the Cristo Center. If by chance you see Betty Sander, please wish her a uh, happy 80th birthday. Uh, Betty was here last night with a whole bunch of her family members and she said technically her birthday was last month, but she's basically been partying for the last 30 days. So. She's doing good for 80 years old, I'll tell you that. All right, so wish her happy birthday. And last but not least, we did have an election this week. I'm sure that some of you all are very happy about the outcome. I'm sure that some of you aren't. Uh, but what it does show is that America works. The process works. The institutions are strong. So whatever happens, remember that this is all in God's hands. It's all gonna be okay. And let's see if we can set aside our differences for a while and see if we can solve a few of our problems that lie before us. And once we get a couple of problems solved, then we can go back to hating each other if you all wish. All right? So let's see what, we, let's see what happens. All right? Okay, everybody, have a great day. Enjoy this beautiful weather that the Lord has given us. And until next time, uh, be, be, be safe out there. All right? And now if everyone would please stand. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> May Almighty God bless you the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace.